Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, two things I want to talk about. The early access event for the Japanese light cruisers and the Japanese light cruisers themselves. So, first off, early access. Of course, these type of events are not new in any way, shape, or form to World of Warships. They've been in this style for quite some time. I don't like them, and every time they come out, I like to talk about how much I don't like them. Because I don't like them! <laughs> I think they're pretty stupid. I think they're pretty, you know, kind of like, you know, dangling the keys in front of in front of the player base, trying to get them excited to throw money at potentially getting the tier nine of the new line in this um, in one, of, in one of these bundles, which, by the way, there are 63 of this go round. They seem to be settling on like the 61, 63 mark. Which means that, potentially, someone, if they're dead set on getting the Takahashi, which is the Tier 9 uh, Japanese light cruiser, Tekaline light cruiser too, by the way, someone will have to pay 63,000 doubloons to get a Tier 9 Tekaline light cruiser in early access for two patches. A ship that'll be completely free to grind for everybody else in 10 weeks. Now, of course, since it is going to be completely free to grind in 10 weeks, you don't have to do this. It's very true, and I mention this every time we talk about this. This is a completely optional event. In most cases, I don't have issues with them, you know, having a, a, a two ways to get a ship, one a paid way, one a free way, even if you have to wait a little while for the free, for the free way. Because it is a company, they are here to make money, but I just think these events are dumb. Like, why are we having... The tier 9 and the tier 10 now in early access when the old premise of these early access events was that we've got like the mid tier ships done but we're still working on the high tier ships. That used to be the premise of the, or premise, however you say that, of these events. You would in, have these ships out from tier 5 to tier 8 or tier 3 to tier 8 if they were a full line. And you could get all those ships, usually in containers that you could get through combat missions. You get a chance of getting these ships. And I think that worked a lot better. You just did the combat missions. You got the containers. You might get one of these ships in these containers. And you could get the tier 8. You could get the tier 6. Didn't matter. But now they have this whole like sequential bundle thing going on where you have to earn the Japanese tokens by playing the combat missions and then you can get, I believe, up to the tier 6 or the tier 7 just by playing the combat missions and, well, just by doing the combat missions when you're playing the game. And that's sure, cool, that's fine. You know, get a free tier 7 tech line ship while you're at it. But I just don't like, again, how they put the tier 9 in these random bundles, jingle the keys in front of you, in front of your face, and say, "Hey, look! Look at this! Look at this! Look, look at this! Don't you want to throw some money at this to get the um, to get the ship?" And from what I've seen, it, it's not giving the ship up too early, which is well, something. Um, I do normally buy a quite a, quite a few of these bundles, not to get the ship. If I do get the whatever ship is stuck in the random bundles, cool. That's neat. I'll make a video on it. But I normally buy some of these um, bundles to get the tokens so I can get the you know the the mid tier ships so I can play them and then uh, talk about how uh, the upcoming line is like we did with the uh, British battle cruisers and I've done that here and I have up to the tier 8 Japanese light cruiser and oh my god uh, these things are wow um, they're bad <laughs> um, at least the tier 8 is I, I've been playing it for the past couple of hours now, and oh, good God. The, the, the concept of them is that they are light cruisers, so they have, in the case of the tier 8, 150mm guns, and she has a lot of guns, 15 150mm guns. That's, that, that's quite a few. Um, and, wow, it's, it, it's kind of painful to really play because light cruisers for the most part you know you have rapid firing guns that you can and and will get a nice stream of HE going and you'll be burning down or pinning down the enemy ship with your your HE and it does have Japanese HE it does have a 11% fire chance per shell with 15 shells but since they're 150s they only pin 30 millimeters of armor 
which at tier 8 technically isn't too bad to have that base pin uh, because you know 30 millimeters for definitely most of the cruisers you're going to see even the the super cruisers you can pin them well i mean the the large cruisers my bad since we've changed that name around several times already um so that's typically okay but you still need that last oomph to get over the 32 millimeter threshold and you get that last oomph by equipping ifhe which then of course proceeds to cut your fire chance down to uh five six percent you can get up to seven percent if you throw the fire flags on your ship i think you can actually get up to eight percent if you take the skill as as well so now you can pin 32 millimeters of armor great but you're still stuck with 150 millimeter guns and yes they are japanese he shells and they are japanese he in general so on on paper it looks like you should still be able to keep up pretty well with these guns, I mean the HE they do 2,350 maximum damage per HE shell, which is pretty decent compared to oh let me let me pull up the the mine well the mines isn't really that great to compare it to because the um, the um, German HE Alpha is so anemic. Let me go see if I can find uh, um, an American light cruiser uh, real quick. So the uh, the Cleveland, so her HE shells do 2,200 maximum damage. So, again, you're a little bit above the curve, 2,350, but it's not like, you know, amazing like the, the big Japanese HE shells are, apparently. So, man. With that slow fire rate, too, it has a 15 second reload time. And again, you have 15 guns. So, sure. You have 15 guns. It's a lot of... You're throwing a lot of crap out the wall. But, of course, with the nature of what warships and RNG, you're not landing every shell, every salvo. And I don't know if it's just me, but they seem to have a really long flight time. Again, I'm only a few games in, so this isn't a proper proper review of this ship just yet. Just a general um, taste of what, what's to come with these ships. It's just frustrating to play, in my experience. Now, of course, I'm not the best light cruiser player. Um, I, I'm better now in light cruisers than I were than, than I were than I was a couple of years ago for sure. But these seem to be pretty difficult to play. It could be because it's a bit of a different style. It is a big break from the normal light cruiser formula in this game, which is little to no armor, rapid firing guns, um, with either you know a um, some type of gimmick to go along with it. Either it, it's got the you know the high arcs like the American light cruisers. Or it's got you know good maneuverability, um, like something like the Bayard. But these ships, they're, they're pretty maneuverable. I'll, I'll give I'll give them that. They did keep that from the um, other Japanese cruisers. But just the, the the nature of you're firing a light cruiser's guns like a heavy cruiser, you have a long reload time, and it's just weird. It's very weird, and it doesn't seem to be great at doing normal light cruiser things. Now, I do have the torpedoes, which they did say that these are more of torpedo um, tor torpedo cruisers. So they do have a 15 kilometer range on the tier 8 and with the build that I have on it, which I do have the enhanced torpedo uh, explosive skill, whatever it's called, they do 24,000 alpha, which is pretty nice. But they're slow. They go 57 knots. <laughs> which is really, really slow. If you remember when the uh, German cruiser split line came out, they um, they were made fun of for having a 55 knot top speed. Well, these are two knots faster. <laughs> and you only get six. Granted, again, it's a tier eight, so I get why you know you can't completely flood the map with like you know a, a wall of skill or anything like that. But they're very slow. They do hurt when they when they hit. I've managed to sink uh, two ships with them so far. It, it's decent when you're on an off flank and someone's pushing into you. But, again, the armor's not that great. It's a light cruiser. You've got uh, an absolute just ex detonation waiting to happen. Uh, well, not, not a detonation, a dev strike. There we go. That's the correct uh, achievement I'm thinking of now. Waiting to happen with the armor that that this ship has i mean it's it's 25 millimeters all the way around and it's it's citadel is well it's it's up and up there for everybody to see it's pretty exposed it's oh man i don't know it, they're so frustrating to play 
Now, again, it's the first day, my first day with them. But these are the ships that are in early access right now. They're, they're a new type of light cruiser. They're frustrating to play. There's a pretty big learning curve, it seems, with them. And they're asking people to dump 62,000 diplomas into the event to get the tier 9. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Again, the event's optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to do it. Because, again, these ships are going to be completely free to grind for everybody in 10 weeks. And it seems like it, there's a big learning curve, at least. They might be great. I haven't watched any other videos or read anything else about them. I'm just talking from my general first experience with them. Typically, by now, I've got about six games in it. Typically, I, I've been able to pick up on a ship's quirks and features. But to me, it just seems like it's just the Japanese heavy cruiser line because you play it so similarly so far you go to the all flank throw torpedoes at the enemy ships hope they sell into them and just throw your HE at them it it's literally <laughs> the same thing so far except the uh, these have a little less range than the heavy cruisers it, it, <laughs> that's what I've done with it that's worked so far so I don't know if they just failed to get a mixture of the the main line and something new like they've done so well with the the german battle cruisers and the british battle cruisers that they blended the elements of the of the main lines along with you know the the qualities of a battle cruiser with with those two lines pretty well but here with the light cruisers it doesn't seem like that so far again very early impressions of these ships they seem to be difficult to pick up so i would not throw money at this event at all guys just Get what you get, uh, what you can get for free. Give it a, a run. See what they feel like for you. And if they work, if they're working for you, great. I'm happy. Tell me what you're doing to get them to work in the comments down below. And well, we'll see if time goes on. If I pick these up a little bit better. So not my official review for them or anything yet. Just initially, they, they seem to be in a pretty rough state at the moment. So guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Just again, another PSA to stay away from spending money on the early access event as per usual. We did hit 40,000 subscribers. I did talk about, about that in Tuesday's video, which nobody watched because I guess it's, it was about submarines. So if you're wondering about the 40k giveaway that is happening, we're going to start the uh, process on Monday. So be sticking around for that. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday, wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.